Good morning. Here we are at Batley Grammar School where it all kicked off this year, didn't it go down? The uh, teacher allegedly showed the children a cartoon image of the Prophet Muhammad. That poor teacher is now in police protection. No one, even his close family or friends, knows the whereabouts of him, his wife and his very young child. So we are here today where it all went down for the great by-election. We have 16 candidates standing. That is going to water the vote down. We are hopefully going to get some interviews today. Uh, Andrew Bridgen, hopefully Jada. And we're going to see what's going on with the wonderful left. Uh, they appear to be kicking off in town. We're going to go and have a look and see what we can find. There is a strong police presence around, so they're expecting some uh, hokey-cokey action today. So let's just go see, shall we? opinionated women together <laughs> who could write it so tell me why are we standing for Batley and Spen why are you here what brings you here do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest we like that you know, we I don't like mince honesty. my words right this is rather cynical but um, I launched the British Freedom Party last year so I launched it actually after they started this whole scamdemic and lots of people in the houses and started going after people for going to the shop and it was crazy Living. so yeah yeah basically and I, it wasn't even a party at the time it was an advocacy group to defend people who were unlawfully harassed by the police. Mm -hmm. And then it morphed into a new party, which I think, to be fair, the country was crying out for. They need it. I think so. Um, we're very hardline, as you might expect. Um, <laughs> we're an ethno-nationalist group. We're a Christian movement. It's not a prerequisite that everyone is a Christian. We've got members who aren't, but largely, we recognise that the country is in such big trouble and that demographics tell us where we're heading. It's not, it's not repairable, it's not repairable through demographic change, unfortunately. What we need to do is dig in, um, like the other communities have done in our... Well, Batley is a good example, right? Yes, yes, let's use it. Huge Islam, Islamic community in Batley, dominant community. Um, we saw at the Batley Grammar School, for example, the power that they hold, mob rule. Yes. And so um, our ethos at the British Freedom Party is to create those communities for our people yeah. which is the only way that we're going to save in our country absolutely it's the only way that we're going to save our people and have an existence so again rather cynical but we're just abusing the electoral system we're going to start we can test as many as elections as we can i mean we've only been going for less than a year well just over a year now mm -hmm. um, i stood in scotland a couple of months ago yeah you might have seen a chafe nicola sturgeon down the street which was <laughs> completely unexpected but it was it was one of the perks but um this by-election came up and I thought, I actually couldn't have picked um, a, a more opportune moment and a, and a better place for us to stand because there is a huge Islamic community here uh -huh. and they do dominate and they do rule by mob, but there is also a very significant forgotten community, yeah. the indigenous people that are still living in Batley and Spen, they're unrepresented, they will not be represented by Labour who are obsessed with Palestine, George Galloway who's obsessed with Palestine, yeah. the Tories who don't really seem to be able to connect with yeah. the working class. Yeah. Um, so we're here. We're love here it. spreading our message. Love it, love it. But on, reflecting on that note, I've done a bit of door knocking this morning. I'm a former Tory councillor. Yes. And I've done a little bit of door knocking this morning and I found that many, many people feel unrepresented. Yeah. They really, really do. There was a lot of frustration that I did come across on the doorstep, not only from Hancock's slip up, this recent weeks but um uh the, you always see something you want to unsee it that's how i feel <laughs> about un that place. unimagine it unimagine it um so uh yeah there was a lot of anger anger and frustration against that but then there was this real loss of no one cares about us no, but no they do. one cares we about do. us and, i do yeah but i get that i mean i have found throughout my years of activism and in political activism i i have found that that is the general feeling. That is, I mean, imagine that is the general feeling of the indigenous population of Britain. That is how they feel disenfranchised, unrepresented. Yeah. And it, it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a crime that we are bending over backwards for all of these newcomers. Um, we are so hell bent on appeasing everyone other than our own and looking after everyone other than our own. And whether it be children that are being groomed at a ridiculous rate over a, over a 30 year period and it's still continuing now and everyone's yep. still turning a blind eye or yep. 
Yeah, whether it's just the fact that our churches are being converted to mosques because we have to appease these communities, it's just no one's. It, I, I feel like no one's being given a voice, and and I would like to be that voice of the silent majority. That's what that's what they call us, but we're not that silent. Well, I'm not anyway. I was going to say I've seen a few of your bits, Dennis. You're not that silent, but I, but I like it. But I like it because you're a woman that you go out there and you say exactly what falls out your mouth. Yeah. I am very similar in that fashion. Yeah. I wasn't the most popular when I was on council because I did just blah, it came out. If I feel something, I felt, I don't know, you might be able to relate to it. When I was councillor, I felt so strongly that I was there to represent yeah. these people. And I was really, really old school. I kind of modeled myself on my granddad and I do have a lot of his spirit in me. And he always saw politics as a really old fashioned thing. You're out there, you're meeting people, you're on the streets and you're representing this bunch of people. It's not a job. It's not a nine to five thing. You don't go home and clock off. No. It, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's it's that real being able to have the balls to stand up and do the right thing for the bunch of people that voted you in, not for the guys that's telling you what to do. And that was the struggle that I really, really felt. Well, do you think if you got elected, you would continue having the balls you've got now? Oh, 100%. I mean, this is the thing. So I think you and I may be kindred spirits in this respect, right? <laughs> I go they, for it. They would fear having someone like us yeah. in a position of authority or influence yeah. because I'm, I'm not, you know, look, for me, I've been in, in this scene for a long time and I've seen changes. I've seen changes from when I was a small child to now my godchildren are small and, I, and I've seen the difference in, in their lifestyle compared to mine. This is only getting worse and it's getting worse because the people that are failing to represent those who you've been speaking to, I've been speaking to, I've had yeah. exactly the same thing as you, right? Yeah. All these people in the constituency are saying, no one cares about us. Yeah. Do you actually care? Yeah. Uh, but they've seen a lot of stuff that I've been doing out on the streets and they said, you know what, actually you probably do care because we've yeah. seen you out there. Good. I first of all think, take the money out of politics. Take yeah. the money out of politics and see how many of those elitists, those fat cats who are scoffing from the same trough, yeah. see how many of them stay. Make it a commitment, make it a life, a life choice. I mean, it's a really strange life choice, uh -huh. but I decided to shut my business uh, about 10 years ago, or eight years ago, and enter into political activism. Yeah. I had a very comfortable lifestyle. I had a very successful business. Um, I was very comfortable, yeah. right? I shut the business down, went into a life of threats, police harassment, jail, lost my assets, can't get a bank account, had my house taken off of me by the high court, you know, you yeah. name it, of every level. And I wonder how many of them, if they had one element of that, yeah. would continue in their role. They will never speak out because they fear that persecution. They've seen what they've done. Yeah. Because it's, it's those people that have pushed this upon me, yeah. right? The, the, the elitists that have pushed all of this persecution onto the likes of myself and others who speak out. Yeah. If they had to suffer one inch of that, they'd be gone. Self-serving, that's what they are. I do, I do agree with you on that one. I really, really agree. They wouldn't. They don't have the, the spirit to do that. No. And that's the thing. To represent people, you've got to have morals. You've got to have spirit. You've got to have gumption. You've got to, you've got to possess it's a privilege, something. privilege, right? It is. That's what I said. I can't really say that. Exactly. Exactly. I was, you know, I said sounding a bit corny, so I never say that. But no, but, it no, is but I kind of like it. Yeah. People have elected it's, you to represent it's them. It's that, that trust. Is and I, They've I interested think, in you. Absolutely. And like, it. if you look at old school politics, and you know, your, your grandfather, yeah. as we spoke about earlier. Proper politics. Day. Exactly. Yeah. But back then, politicians weren't even people our age. And I'm assuming that you look a lot younger than I am. But around <laughs> our age, let's say, let's say the full <laughs> figure, right? It wouldn't have even been people this young. Generally, it was older, influenced men who had maybe maybe served their country. They had really put a huge amount into society, yeah. Yeah. and they had grafted. Yeah. And then, as very wise, experienced men, they they took on. The privileged role of representing their people, yes. and that's what old school politics. That's what I would love to bring yeah. up. With the right on that. Right, I'm gonna. Have, we need to wrap this up. But on that note, right, I was going. So about four years ago, five years ago, I used to go to a lot of conservative functions, a lot of Tory balls, things like that. Right, and um, I would see all these young people there. And with me being the youngest female Tory councillor, I was like this in this two percent of the country. It was quite hilarious. And um, so with the young people in the room, I'd always gravitate towards them and be like, hey, cool, what are you doing here? And they'd say, I'm studying politics and I want to be a politician. And I'd say, what, right? How can you study politics? And I'm like, okay, so but politics is life. Yeah. It affects everything to do with life. How can 
you, as an 18, 19 year old, understand politics and that is in no way patronizing right you may understand the voting procedures and you may understand the electorate and this that and the other, but you don't understand life right have you have you owned your own home have you paid bills have you managed things have you dealt with council tax all these different things have you paid into a pension how do you feel about this all these life things that we go through they don't do it and they go i want to be a politician what do you want to be famous sweetheart is that what you want no, they want a very these kids they want to be in this elitist gang which is what we see and you know i know that you were formally elected as a tory captain so i don't want to i don't no, want to, I, I put, i'm not casting any aspersions on your good character but <laughs> I will never take offense. this elitist gang which we've seen even with the recent scandal with hancock and whilst oh. the country's being told they can't hug their relatives and we've all got to wash our hands until they bleed and put nappies on our face <laughs> yeah he's there having it away which is it's just going to haunt me for the rest of my I, life. I, I actually saw the gone. footage. I saw, oh, God, it's oh my goodness. Well, the, the, the stills in the Sun newspaper were bad enough for me oh, with no, that, that awkward tip. stance. You no, look like the, a mannequin. The footage is nope, nope, let's not go there. Movie. Anyway, yes, so it's going to haunt me for a long time. Protest. But, you know, the bottom line is, I mean, I made a joke out of it, right? And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed anyone voluntarily married this man, but to actually blag a mistress as well is remarkable. But the fact of the matter is, is one rule for them, one rule for us. And these kids that are coming through the university, which is all very, it's all run by cultural Marxists anyway, the university, um, they recognise that if they become part of that elitist group, they, they're in the 1%, they're in the people that are controlling the little people. We're the little yeah. people, yeah. and the fat cats are abiding by their own rules. Yeah. So, be, you know, make a difference, step out of the establishment, yeah. be the voice, be the rebel, join us. <laughs> I was just, I'm just about to wrap up with saying that, join us, rebellious, independent, feisty women that want the best for our beautiful, beautiful country. We do. Take care. Hi, Hi. thank you so much for sparing five minutes to have no, a natter with us. No, so I can imagine I, you're... I knew your grandfather well, so I'm very happy to meet his granddaughter. Oh, thank you so much. So it does mean so much because I am a real champion of granddad, obviously. Yeah, he, so, he was quite a character in Parliament. Yeah? yeah? yeah very much so. yeah, a good character, I hope. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yes. <laughs> good. Yes. Well, he's my inspiration through and through. Hence, I have such a big interest in politics. I, yeah, I've said it's just Councillor, and now I'm kind of into journalism. Are you a conservative too? I am. Okay. I am. Very nice to meet you. Yes. Um, so we're just with this election being, it's by election being so highly sought after, really, with 16 candidates. So I'm just trying to catch up with as many of them as possible. And your name always comes up when we when we've mentioned the, uh, the Batley and Spence. So I'd love to know, um, kind of what. What do you want to achieve here? What's your vision for Batley? Where well, do you want it to go? This place is neglected, left behind, taken for granted. And these are exactly the kind of people that I like to stand up for and represent. And we need to play catch up. We need to play catch up even with Huddersfield, yeah. which is like Paris compared to here. Yeah. The state of this, uh, the roads and there's a zebra crossing in my eye line now that only the keenest eyesight could identify as a zebra crossing, which is an accident waiting to happen. The people here have been trying literally for years to get that painted. So much so, my first election promise was to paint it myself. I saw an interview the, of you yeah, saying uh, that. I didn't realise we were still every, next to that, every, that crossing. Every time I look at it, I realise that it may be in a week. I'll be on my hands and knees painting that zebra crossing. I'll come and watch. And maybe filling in that <laughs> pothole. We've got potholes that you could lie down and sleep in. It's not the, bad. Uh, the people here have been completely taken for granted. And that's because a one-party state is a very bad idea. <laughs> Labour have been in control here decade after decade after decade. And they thought that they could always uh, just take for granted the people here. And they can't. And I like proving that to yes. uh, other parties and especially Labour. Yes, I can imagine. Yeah. I see the fighting spirit in you yeah, that, sure. that, yeah, standing up for it, people. Yeah. I'm, yeah, you're probably like me. Sorry, very loud car. Kind of got a heart as big as a bucket, is what my friends say. And I think from you putting yourself in this position and putting yourself out there and wanting to do the best for the community, exactly. that is what I admire in people that really, really want to step forward and they want to take up the gauntlet sure. and they no want to do the right thing. There's no point in politics if not for that. Uh, it's not you're not doing it for the money. 
I don't need no. the money. You're not doing it for uh, for fame. I'm already well known enough. Uh, I'm doing it because I believe in it. Good. That's wonderful. How are you being received? How are you finding Marvelous. the doorsteps? Marvelous. I mean, uh, if you look at the bookies who usually know what they're talking about. Yeah. I've gone from 166 to 1 to 10 to 1 today and it'll be less than that tomorrow. Well so, done. Uh, we, we are making the weather here, yeah, making the political weather. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So are you looking forward to possibly getting back into Parliament, parliamentarian yes. ways and life? Yeah. And well, yeah, I mean, it'll complicate my life, but uh, uh, Parliament is a great platform, as your grandfather knew well. Yes. Uh, from which you can spread the message that you believe in yes. to the widest possible number of people. And my message will be, Batley has spoken and yes. you better respond. You better start filling in the potholes, <laughs> painting the zebra crossings, uh, doing all the things that you should have been doing years ago. That the community deserve. Exactly. The community are all exactly. paying into their council you know, tax and they, do, they yeah, deserve yeah. it. It's and for nothing here, you're, you're paying council tax for virtually nothing here. Uh, we, uh, we have a saying in Scotland, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. And we're going to roar, never mind squeak. I love it. Shall we finish on that? That's yeah. cracking. I love it. Thank you so much. Big pleasure. Thank you. Um, your grandfather's in my eyes right now. Oh, thank, thank you so you, much. So here we are, wrapping up our day at the pub. No better place to do it, hey? So we, um, we've had a great day, actually. We started off our day with um, meeting up with a Conservative candidate. Um, he wouldn't come on camera and do an interview with us for legal reasons, uh, but he seemed a very polite, nice chap. Um, we then went and met um, another Conservative MP who is out supporting him. We were hoping to get an interview with him, but it didn't pan out, unfortunately. So um, we then went and met up with, as you've seen, Jada. Um, lovely, lovely, lovely chat with Jada. It was really, really nice to meet somebody from such the other end of the spectrum. It was really, really nice. Um, we've finished up the day with meeting up with George Galloway, which again, as you've seen, was a lovely, lovely chat. Really nice guy. And the thing that I took away from meeting George was that he does really really care about what he's saying and what he's standing for and what he believes in um, he really really does so when I'm sat here reflecting I've had something to eat finally and what I am taking away from today and meeting Jada and meeting um, George are these two people that are so so at the opposite ends of the spectrum and they both care deeply about making one community and about no division and that we should all work together. And they both care so much that if these two minds and these two souls came together and met in the middle, imagine what could be done with Batley and Spen. Just imagine. So I can't see it happening anytime soon, but the old sentimentalist in me hopes that one day two minds that are so so far apart would meet in the middle and would open up talks and would think about what can be done i think there is a lot to reflect on today that's what i've i've taken from it the middle of the road parties don't seem to be that forthcoming they don't seem to be that that here for the local people they they're not what I learned standing on the doorsteps is that the local people don't feel listened to by the large mainstream parties. They don't feel respected and valued. Whereas the smaller groups um, like, like Jada and George, they're giving people the opportunity and they're listening to them. And to me, that is exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. So if we go back to me reflecting on people on the doorsteps and how they're feeling, on another note, what I did see, sorry, we've got lovely Saturday night people enjoying the pub. Um, what we did see and hear on the doorsteps was people are infuriated by Matt Hancock. Of course they are, we are, we're absolutely infuriated. He's had people held prisoner in their, 
homes and nursing homes for over 12 months and people have been far too scared to see their parents, their grandparents, their children, their nieces, their nephews, their families. It's been absolutely heartbreaking and they've not spent the time that they should have and it is absolutely appalling, absolutely appalling. Whilst he's been acting in this way, I have read his um, resignation letter to Boris, which is on the government website. And the, the line that angered me the most was that he apologises for breaking COVID guidance. So when we've been out breaking COVID guidance, as he calls it, we've actually been called breaking the law and we've been fined for it. So it's one rule for, for us little people, us peasants, and one rule for them. He called it guidance. That's what he did. Apparently we break the law. I'd love to know the difference. I'd love, so Matt Hancock, if you're watching, let me know. Let me know, because I'd really love to know. Um, and it's people have lost people have lost interest people have lost the trust people have lost the trust of the large parties i think this is going to be a really really interesting election i think it's going to really really tell so much about the current situation we will look forward and see whether it's going to trigger another by-election. We'll see if Matt Hancock is just resigning as health secretary or if he's going to stay on. I'm sure if he uh, resigns as his seat as well, that'll be good fun. Let's see what goes on there. Well, luckily for Matt, he did uh, resign before he was pushed. I had it from a member of the Conservative Party today that if he failed to resign and show some respect to the people of this country, he would have been pushed by the chief whip. So he has saved his own ass by doing that. And I think I'm, I'm a little bit, to be honest, yeah, he has, um, he has jumped before he was pushed. I would have quite gladly liked to see him pushed, if I'm honest. I think a lot of people would have enjoyed that show, but hey ho. He's always ruining it for us, isn't he, that old Hancock? But hey, like I said, a lot to reflect on today. It's been wonderful. The people of Batley are fab. Um, and again, I apologise for such a noisy background. Take care, lots of love.